Hello again, it's me, and welcome to THC Public Access TV, where we're going to talk about cannabis and all the rest of it. Today, our producer Barnaby didn't show up, so it's going to be me manning the phones, manning the video, my blood pressure is down, my self-esteem is high, and let's get right into this. Okay, first caller. Hey, it's Barnaby. Well, I missed my train because I slept in. See, I've been using cannabis for sleep, but apparently I haven't been using it the right way. So if it's not too much trouble, could you help me? Mr. Big Public Access TV producer needs my help. <laughs> yes, I will be answering your precious question, but I'm going to demand from you something. A price. All right, let's go. Getting adequate sleep is important, and about half of the world population suffers from insomnia at some point during a year. Lack of sleep can lead to decreased productivity, hormonal imbalances, and even emotional instability. And we realize that many of these cases are due to things like improper sleep hygiene. This can be a result of having too much light as you're trying to get to sleep, or even having the wrong quality of light during certain parts of your day. A lot of this has to do with the way our brains are set up. So our eyes lead to our optic nerves, which cross before they head to our brain. At the point the nerves cross, there is the suprachiasmatic nucleus. The suprachiasmatic nucleus is essential for regulating things like hormones, cortisol, and also regulating our brain's release of melatonin. Also, exercising too closely to the time you want to go to bed can negatively impact your sleep cycle. So don't go melatonin and sweating if you want to maximize your natural melatonin. So if you're a baller with sick gains like me, turn down the LED on your beeper and do your lifting in the morning. But there's some sleep disturbance that's not due to sleep hygiene, and this is where cannabis comes in. And to aid in the sleep, people generally will use THC. THC in the form of cannabis can remedy this by helping us get into the phases of sleep. What type of cannabis? Mainly indica dominant strains. Indica strains are often high in things like myrcene and linalool. In conjunction with the THC and other elements, this can provide a very sedating and relaxing experience. Even THC's cousin CBD can help us relax the body and the mind so we can sleep more easily. But as anyone with sleep disturbance will tell you, not all sleep disturbance is the same. If you're having trouble getting to sleep, you'll want to use something fast acting, but it's not going to last the whole night and make you groggy in the morning. In this case, you're better off using something inhaled. This would be things like smoking or vaping. Easy in, easy out. But conversely, if you're having trouble staying asleep, you'll want something that lasts for a long time. In this case, you would use an ingested form of cannabis like an ingestible oil or an edible. Smoking cannabis versus eating cannabis has very different onsets, very different durations, and actually very different effects. So if you want to go down one of these routes, I encourage you to watch our previous THC Public Access TV video on edibles, which will be down below. So now that you know how cannabis can be used for sleep, you need to know the risks of what cannabis does to your sleep architecture. Getting hazy before sleep will affect the stages of your sleep, and the stages are incredibly important. When we analyze the brain, our brains create different waves at different stages of sleep. Human brain confirmed wavy. And the first wave is the beta wave. And this is a wave that you're familiar with because you're experiencing it right now, pal. It's the wave your brain makes when you're awake, when you're having a walk with your best gal, you're whistling a merry tune after book club. Beta waves are you awake, your brain operating normally. The next stage is the alpha wave. The alpha wave can be induced by just simply closing your eyes. You are awake, but your eyes are closed. And the reality sets in that your best gal goes to another high school in Canada. You've never heard of her. The next stage of sleep is the theta wave. And in the theta wave, things happen relating to our memories and our emotions. And then next we get into those deep, deep delta waves. Heart rate slows, breathing slows, blood pressure drops. It's getting sleepy in this house. It's that deep, deep sleep. Oh, baby. <laughs> What's that? You sleeping? You sleeping like a log? <laughs> REM! Yeah! And now let's talk about REM sleep. Our brains become more active. There's an increased supply of blood to our brain, and the frequency of those brain waves rises drastically. The rapid eye movement phase has exactly that rapid shifting of the eyes, and this is the area of our sleep architecture where we dream. 
REM occurs about 90 minutes after falling asleep and recurs every 90 minutes after that. And our REM phases get longer later into our sleep. REM is great because it provides energy to our brains and our bodies, and it helps to support daytime performance. The brain is active so dreams occur before they're crushed. So your body is sleeping but your brain is going off. You would think this would tire us out, but this is where restorative sleep happens. Not in the deep delta phase, but in the active REM phase. And now Barnaby is paging me wondering how this relates to marijuana. Well, everything in life is a trade-off. Whether it's pot, whether it's alcohol, whether it's sleeping pills, anything that will pull you into your sleep artificially has a penalty. So you enter REM sleep less frequently and you stay in REM sleep for a shorter amount of time. You do enter that deep delta phase. If you use cannabis, you'll sleep like a log, but you might not have that restorative sleep you're looking for. The best restorative sleep is natural sleep. So if you use pot, your REM might not be automatic for the people because this is all in the 90s or something. But if you're a serious insomniac, THC will help you greatly. But the problem is this, if you're using THC consistently with your pot, smoking pot, and then one day you stop using THC, your REM sleep will go into hyperdrive. And you'll have very long REM cycles. You'll have more dreams, long dreams, weird dreams, vivid dreams. And for some people, these dreams get pretty scary. But no matter how bad they get, they should subside within a couple of weeks. Just prepare for it and remember that these dreams are not real. It's all a dream. So if one wakes you up, just splash some water in your face and relax with a Word Up magazine. So good, baby, baby. But how can you prevent bad dreams from happening in the first place? Never stop using marijuana. <coughs> or just don't go cold turkey, huh? Little puff here, little puff there. A little bit of butt at bedtime before murder, she wrote. If it's not a school night, wean yourself off. I don't know. But if you're gonna go from depressing REM all the time with THC to just none, prepare to dream like you've never dreamt before. And that's a warning. And that's it. So thank you for joining us at THC Public Access TV. And now that I've answered your question, Mr. Hollis Ortega, it appears it's time for payment. <laughs> so what I'm going to need from you is... He hung up! What I wanted was respect! What I wanted was respect from you!